the serpent and the tree. Okay. So in the Garden of Eden, the serpent was one of the tree, uh, was the one in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This imagery is reptilian uh, and it's representative also of Moses and the Israelites with Nehushtan, um, which was representative of the Christ. The downward and upward influence of the tree of life is what this also represents because the, the, the serpent on the tree of light, life, and I throw the tree of life in here because uh, in the seven sermons to the dead, one of the four is the tree of life, okay, Arbor Vitae, okay, and the, the influence on the tree of life is the serpent, and it's, it's almost like saying that what it is that we know, okay, our own subjective knowledge leads to the desire, because we'll, we'll come to find in here that, or if we read the seven sermons, that the serpent is the desire to go after certain things, and it leads to commingling with groups of individuals, you know what I mean? And and most likely, too, people of bad company, you know, and Christ was known to uh, deal with whores, uh, wine bibbers, and different pe people like that. And Christ was representative by also the serpent, okay? That uh, just, just it, it said in the Bible, uh, just as um, Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That's one reference of quite a few that link Christ to the serpent, okay? So the serpent and the tree, all right? And then um, <clears throat> we can look at the, in, in, in uh, the um, Norse tradition, Nidhogger and uh, the Yggdrasil tree. Um, and, but that's, that would get into something else. Uh, I'll, I'll read a, a little bit of the idea here. Um, the, Ig the Yggdrasil tree with the serpent at the bottom, okay? The messenger squirrel as the courier of messages to the top and bottom, okay? Um, and the eagle residing at the top of the tree is analogous to also the three levels of the brain, okay? And um, there is, uh, let's see, <laughs> this 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 whole idea that I just spoke of on the Yggdrasil tree is in the Norse mythology. Um, that could be read separately because the thing is, is, if I got into that right now, we would be we would be in for a very long lecture. I don't want to do that to you guys. So uh, the dove and the tree now. Okay, after forty days in the deluge. Okay, no Noah sent a raven. Then a dove out of the ark, okay? And the dove brought back an olive branch as proof that the water subsided from the earth after 54 days. Now, what would that mean? Why is that the dove and the tree so important, Isaiah? Come on. Okay, why? Because the deluge, okay, represents the solutio in alchemy. And that, 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 is, that, that could be a time where you're going through uh, blending with... Uh, 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 unconscious contents with inside of you. And a lot of times that means too that you're alone. A lot of times that means you're going through the negredo phase of alchemy, meaning you're depressed. You you could be very depressed. You could be in a, in, a, in a libido regression. This is where the dove represents something from the super conscious, if you will, okay? Um, that brings you certain divine and very amazing messages and what this dove is doing is descending so that's coagulatio that's coagulation that's saying that hey the earth is still moist it's still wet okay it's still saturated with the unconscious your physical body is still saturated with the unconscious but i'm giving you a message that these that things are going to form and are going to change to where you can walk on this dry land and start repopulating and rebuilding your life you see, and, and we've all had an experience like that in uh, in um, times of uh, great distress. And that's why I truthfully believe that times of distress are creative times, you know, so the dove and the tree. OK, those are two of the uh, the the four uh, uh, elements here within the seven sermons of the uh, to the dead that could be mixed and that one can one can glean 
some type of idea from now. Okay, so we're going to get to the next one. The flaming tree, okay? The burning bush, whence Yehovah revealed his identity as Ahia, Ashur, Ahia, which is I am who I am or I am who I will be, okay? Uh, and, and some would say that Ahia, Ashur, Ahia means existence, his existence. I've heard that one as well, though, too. You know what I mean? Um, and some have said that it represents the past, present, and future, you know, but I'm, I'm going on the literal context. Ahia, Ashur, Ahia, I am who I am, I am who I will be. Now, um, the flaming tree <clears throat> being the burning bush, okay? Now, I was saying earlier how the tree represents your subjective knowledge, okay? What you know, what the, the what you've studied, what you've gained. Okay, it's great. It's great to know a gang of stuff. Great. Clap, clap, clap for you. You're such a smart person. But what is that unless you have the desire to go out and to act on those things and to actually coagulate those deeds? Because deed is a coagulatio alchemical idea. Go, go and make it happen. OK, so the thing is, is when you go and make something happen in the world, for instance, you get a name for what it is that you know and what it is that you do based upon what it is that you know. Uh, uh, an individual that, that's smoking crack out of a pipe 24 seven that everybody in the neighborhood sees, well, what do they call him? Oh, that's such and such the crackhead. You know what I mean? You, you get a name based upon what you do. You see what I'm saying? And that, that happens in a lot of social circles from the lowest all the way up to the highest, okay? So getting a name in the highest is based upon the knowledge that you have and the deeds that you do. Getting a name in the lowest is based upon the knowledge and what you do with the knowledge. And the thing is, is uh, this name that is given based upon high and esoteric knowledge, Gnosis, is the name of God and keep in mind that our names are known by God okay and that uh, we shouldn't re we shouldn't rejoice the alchemists say that we're able to do certain works uh, that are miraculous in certain ways and you know that is definitely due, due to the magnetism of the stone within us itself and our ability to operate uh, that magnetism all right but um, they say rather rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Okay. And I will attest to the fact that the name that you are given, and I'm going to sound like a weirdo. I don't care because I, I, I have found what my name actually is. Everybody has a, a name that the self, if you will, the higher self or God knows you as and that name is just as ineffable as the name of god meaning you could tell it to somebody but in telling it to somebody it wouldn't even be the proper pronunciation it's it's a glyph of the capabilities and what is laid out for your life and what your innate personal properties are geared and wired towards it's actually like uh, a glyphic blueprint of your being and you receive it in vision and the the vision corresponds to um <clears throat> what ends up happening as you enter the enter through the pillars of boaz and jacan uh and it's, a, it's it's actually one of the masonic tracing board pictures and you end up going to the top of these stairs uh past a, a checkered hallway uh floor and into a uh, parlor room that has the name of God on top of it, and there's a divine mystery there. Okay, um, I, I <clears throat> in in my process of an individuation, and the process of an individuation is initiation. Okay, it's a form of self initiation, and the thing is, is keep in mind you don't have to be a part of a Masonic group in order to become initiated into mystery wisdom it's within you the kingdom of god is within you so you can have an encounter with the self that will bring you to these realizations okay it's something that something that i need to say here that needs to be known and that's what this idea of the flaming tree would represent because the name of god was revealed 
during the encounter uh, um, between uh, Moses and God. I think it was Moses. I think it was Moses. Yes, I think it was. It's either either Moses or Abraham, one of the patriarchs. Shoot me if I'm wrong, right? Okay, so uh, anyways, um, the flaming dove would be equivalent now to the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Psychological goading is also what this intimates, okay? Also, the phoenix rising from its own ashes, okay? The flaming dove, desire of a higher kind. And we only get desire of a, of a higher kind by consistently being burned in uh, in, in, in a pyre of our own creation. Keep in mind this, 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 this phoenix, which is an exalted creature, okay? I, and, I, and I hate to have to equate us in our, in, in our idiocy sometimes to something so exalted, but at the same time, it goes to show that even in, in the worst of our uh, uh, exploits and how we crash and burn, that it's part of the whole journey of the self into selfhood. You know, you have to crash your head into a wall several times sometimes before you learn that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm tired of banging my head into that wall and I need to scale it some other way or maybe find the door, you know? So, um, and the fact that the, this dove enters when you least expect it, um, I believe that in some ways it can be brought into manifestation in ways through synchronicity, okay? I believe that, but it is largely said and spoken that it comes of its own accord. And usually when people are practicing singleness, aloneness to themselves, okay, and waiting for it. But the flaming dove, this is also, we can look at this as uh, the Holy Spirit being the the dove of Aphrodite, you know what I mean? Basically, um, being goaded by the archetypes, basically uh, uh, being being possessed, filled with an energy that you don't know what it is, but it's leading you towards doing something. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes you got to sit with that energy and allow allow basically put it in the alchemical bottle and see what it transmutes and changes into. Okay. So that's the idea of the flaming dove, okay? The flaming serpents now, okay? Punishers of the wayward Israelites is what they are, okay? In the same idea of the uh, the um, the serpent in the tree, okay? We have the flaming serpents, which are punishers of the wayward Israelites, which all of us can be at times. The seraphim, okay? Also, uh, the seraphim are fiery serpents, okay? Also, the brazen serpent, whom Moses was commanded to create, which neutralized the biting of the creatures upon the Israelites. So, the flaming serpents, we could look at it as the, the desire to go and do something uh, that you're goaded from within to do. And the serpent as something that is bringing these desires out so that you can go and do these things. And, and the thing is, is you got to keep in mind that Jung in the Seven Sermons of the Dead termed the serpent as a whore. She's whorish. She's a, uh, she's a enticer. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it, it's a very, that, that's what we're looking at is a very eros principle, but this is the thing. There's higher desire, which is a desire for divinity. I always say this, and there's also lower desire. There's love and there is love. Okay. And the thing is, is if we're going after lower desires, we're going to reap to ourself in, I mean, we're going to reap to ourself corruption. Okay. And, and that sounds very moralistic, but really what it is, is, uh, uh, you can't, you can't do a gang of hard drugs, for instance, and not get an addiction. 
it's it, it you know it, it it comes along with it with, with the playing field you know what i mean uh, another statement from the bible for instance was like can a man take fire to his bosom and be and not be burned that was in a uh, correlation with the idea of the uh the strange woman you know can you go and and commit acts of lust and live a live truly and purely libidinously and not be affected in any way by that not get get sucked into a damn hole you know so it, it's something to think about but the desire for divinity banks on the same deity because you have once again venus arania which represents the the, the celestial venus which is uh, a sophia if you will from which we get the word uh philosopher which is a lover of sophia lover of wisdom right and then you can also be a, 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 a lover of whores and whoredom. You know what I mean? And this is also why the idea of, of prostitution in, uh, in um, older temples, you know, temples, uh, Gr old Greek temples, old Roman temples, I'm pretty sure it continued on there as well, too, was uh, a holy thing. There was sacred prostitution because of venus you see what i'm saying but but the thing is though is is to to i mean and and if if you're like wow man he's talking about sacred prize what man what the hell well um all, almost all the patriarchs in the bible uh as they passed from one land into another one city into another several of them as it is written went into prostitutes and that's just a nice way of saying it okay so um Let's let's go from here, okay? Um, and continue reading because we still have some more to read. So I'm gonna get into this list of dualities, which are really unities, okay? They're really unities, okay? And um, I'm gonna start with the masculine side. No, I'm gonna start with with the feminine side of this, okay? The feminine uh, side of this of this uh, this pillar, if we, if you will. And what I'll do while that is going on, I'm gonna throw up a diagram of uh, the figures mentioned in the seven sermons, and uh, we also have some additions from uh, the the Eastern Taoist idea, okay? Which you'll also see being listed in here as well okay i'm gonna start on the feminine side and we're gonna go to the um, uh, masculine side as these things have been taken from the seven sermons of the dead to get a, a understanding of the elements that lead to understanding the opposites and how they need to be unified okay so in the archetypal realm okay uh, or above that, rather, Abraxas, we have at the top of this, this whole idea, is beyond space and time, without which space and time, as Einstein said, all things would occur at once. Okay, but wait, 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 wait. But space and time are an, are an illusion, right? Yes, truthfully, they are. There is only the now. We, 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 we remember the past, we think there's a past and all these other things because of the hippocampus and the way we go back into memories and, you know, we get all emotional and, you know, something will happen and we remember something and we think to ourselves why we can't do it or whatever, right? And then uh, there's desire for things in the future and there's also fear and apprehension because of the past or the hippocampus, if you will, and the way that the neurons fire in the brain, um, the patterns that they make that evoke a, or elicit a feeling out of you uh, when you're going to take on something that's in the future. But really, truthfully, it's already happened. There's only now. Okay. So that's why I noted this, that Einstein said, if space and time didn't exist, all things would occur at once. To think about that, he isn't he also the one too that stated that time is an illusion? And if time is illusion, then space is also an illusion. 
But it seems like it's real because it takes time and effort and all these other things to traverse space. You see? It's just here. It's just now. Okay? So, um, continuing here. Below that, okay, we could say is God, Son, highest good, and fullness. Okay? Um, the tree of self proceeds from here upside down. Not the tree of ego. The tree of the ego grows upwards from the bottom. Okay? Something to think about. And that's the tree that needs to be chopped down or abridged, if you will. Okay? So, um, so below or between the between, the, the between realm is consciousness. And this between realm are these lists, the, the, these lists of opposites I'm going to read off of. This is what is conscious creating, you know what I mean? What And what I mean conscious creating, how with our left brains we chop things up and say this is this, that is that. Our right brains see things in a clear, holistic oneness, a clear picture as they are. This is the idea that children have. You talk to a children and ask them what this is or what and they'll tell you what it is. I, I there have been so many times that I've been doing studies on uh, symbolism, whatever, and uh, I, I I I'll get my son and I take him over here and I say, hey, hey, uh, hey son, uh, what do you think this is? And he'll tell me what what he thinks it is, and it's really amazing because I'm like, wow, dude, you're right. What you're seeing, you're right. That's exact. I mean. And, and, and sometimes like he, he totally blows me away because with, through a child's eyes, they, 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 they see things. They might have seen this or that or this or that, but they, they're, they're seeing things in a, in a pure representational form. They see things as they are. And we still have the ability to do that too, but we have to do it beyond what we think we know. And that's just what that is or whatever. We have to get into more of a creative, free-flowing uh, state, more of a holistic state in order to do so. So <clears throat> starting off the list that comprises consciousness, these dualistic lists comprise consciousness, okay? They're, they're keys to consciousness. So we have the burning one, okay? Which is eros or flame. Um, the, and that is the medium between the collective unconscious and conscious self ego, and um, it basically flames up and dies. So if we think about the flames up and dies portion, it's like fire. You think about fire desires. You know what I mean? Um, many a time we get a desire, we just do it, like the Nike swoosh sign. We just do it. And um, if we were to sit on that desire, sit on that thing that we, with our reptilian complex, just want to go and do, or with the id, we just want to just do it and do it and do it and do it. If we stopped and just sat with the feeling of what it is that we want to do and really be conscious about that and really sit with the tension of the opposites, what would happen is it would turn into something else. And to take note of that something else that it turns into would be supremely important because what you've done is caused an alchemical transformation. So I'm actually giving you a practical way to use this now, okay? For those of you that have sat this long through all my rambling, okay? We'll continue. The fire or eros flame, right? The burning one binds two together. Life and love stand opposed in its divinity, okay? Because life, if we look at life, right? Life and what it is that you want to do, right? And what you love to do, what you really love to do, don't go hand in hand. A lot of times, many times there's a clash, you see? And that, and that speaks for itself. I could limit the, the weightiness of that idea and that saying by explaining it further. So I would like for you to think about it, but I've just given you a, a, a springboard towards understanding that and what I've previously just said as a, 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 an, an indicator, okay? So it is unique to its own essence, okay? Fire. 
the flame, Eros, the burning one, okay? But it's collective to all. That is the explanation of what an archetype is, okay? And that is also that also links to the idea of a monad, okay? <clears throat> related, it's related to the original drive nature of man, also to the highest forms of the spirit. Um, quite possibly, this quite possibly why the seven levels of libido attachment being attention, interest, desire, um, see, attention, interest, desire, affection, enthusiasm, compulsion and worship if i'm not mistaken okay are the seven levels of libido attachment and uh namely the last three okay so enthusiasm compulsion and worship the last three okay reveal the god image in man to the trained and discerning eye this is why this idea that I'm speaking about, reading these things here, is so very important because if you can reveal the God image in yourself, or if you can reveal it in others by understanding of archetypes and being able to figure out what that constant uh, 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 image is that pops up where there's a compulsion, where there's an enthusiasm, or, or, or where there's worship, right? You can basically get the framework understanding of what an individual's basically their operating system is running off of at that time or for even an elongated period. OK, because this may be the framework of their consciousness and to find that to see that I, I'm almost willing to bet that it's possible that that person doesn't even know what the constants are, what the underlying constants are on what it is, what operating system they're running on, if you will, okay? So this is another workable uh, uh, idea that comes from these four elemental key pieces of, of, uh, of uh, information that Jung put out of the seven sermons of the dead that are linked with the praxis, okay? So let's continue. Um, spirit, let me see, hold on. It thrives, so the flame, fire, right? The burning one, Eros. It thrives when spirit and drive are in harmony. Spirit is the medium of contact between gods and men, okay? So these, the desires that you have, the, the way that, that, that you're pushed, the way that you're driven in your libido, this is letting you know what that divine and pure will is within you, you know, and, and, and finding out what the archetypal underpinnings of that is shows you how you are linking to source on an archetypal level. OK, and the archetypal level, mind you, once again, uh, deals with the anima and animus side of things. OK, and, and, and this is also going to show you what lens a lot of your a lot of the light from your dreams is coming from. As well too so uh, uh, it, it's very elucidating material you know um, especially if you're doing the dream work um, you a lot of times you'll find uh, uh, that you'll run into a character for instance that is uh, uh, of some measure of hybridity you know what I mean it's a unity of opposites I found mine and um, mine links directly to the two things that are the key core pillars of my personal existence and the way that I live my life and do things. And, and if for some reason I'm in a state where I can't find myself and I'm lost, I look at those two key elements that this person, if you will, this personage spoke to me and showed me who he was. OK. Um, and I'm able to locate myself back to center. OK. So and then this this happens for everybody that can unearth these materials. OK, so um, now getting into the next portion here, desire, movement, eros, pleasure, longing, suffering, form, fulfilling is the idea of the burning one or eros flame that we were speaking of. OK, so um, we'll go to the next page here for this.
Okay, so it's here. Almost missed the page here. Hold on real quick. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the serpent, okay? So make sure I'm on track with my pages here because we're going to have to go to this next side. Okay, so the serpent um, deals with fast brain centers, fast brain center. This is the, the one that acts quickly, that reacts quickly, that does things in a fast manner, okay? And the serpent follows, it, it, in correlation with the idea of fast, okay? Follows the lightning path on the tree of life, going down it and also going up. And then I'll show a picture of this because what it actually will create is the uh, what they call the... Um, what do they call that again? It is the, uh, it, it, it's a cube within a cube, a hypercube is what it will create. What it will, uh, uh, what, what, it, what it develops in it's going up and going down. It develops into a hypercube. And uh, that that's amazing because the Lemniscides forms on the tree of life perfectly as well though too, the dove forms on this tree of life perfectly as well though too and shows you how the uh, divine messages enter which we'll talk about in the next column so i'm going to speak on the serpent now it's a feminine energy okay it is the daemon of sexuality okay and in the idea of sexuality it's the daemon of sexuality oh well sex oh my gosh oh here we go right 